Time to battle Isabella in Guild Raid level 9. I hate this woman. 7k dreamer please. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. By popular demand, we are going to check out how to battle Isabella. So she blocks physical damage and poisons on basic attack. Her love tap 1 deals 500 damage to 3 enemies and has a 100% chance to bleed. Her love tap 2 deals the same thing but ignores defense as well so it's a stronger version of love tap 1. Her love tap 3 deals 4000 fixed damage to all enemies and also increases the damage dealt to your team by 70% for 2 turns. Take note that it is 2 turns so it will go by very quickly. For her cash love she decreases your attack stat by 70% for 2 turns, reduce your 1 turn buff duration and also reduces your awakening gauge. And of course we can't forget her awakening skill which eliminates all enemies. And before we begin we need to check out something very important which is the guild buff. So these are my guild buffs, increase lethal damage, crit rate, increase awakening gauge charge speed, increase physical attack and very importantly reduce enemies block rate because you have to reduce her block rate otherwise she will be blocking all your crit attacks okay. So first off, the first skill to cast is Aragon skill. I know this is very pointless right now because it reduces Awakening Gauge and she doesn't have any but this is really to get his Awakening skill up so you can actually boost Spina's output very very early. So you see that my first 4 skills are very standard. I've been running this for about 2 hours consecutively against Isabella. She's super annoying and these are my 4 skills that I go to. So ideally she would not use Catch Love as her first skill otherwise this will reduce Aragorn's Awakening Gauge and you won't be able to use his Awakened skill to boost Spina's output. Okay, So ideally Catch Love should come in at the second skill that would be the best. So you want to use Phoenix before using Lina's Crit Buff. Why so? Because if you use Lina's Crit Buff, it will actually waste one turn. So as you know, the turn-based system has changed. So it's very important that you take note of all these little, little details because each time you use a skill, basically it's one turn gone. Okay, so you have to use the debuff first, then cast the crit rate buff because you want to keep the buff as close as possible to Spina's attack so that you won't waste any in between. <laughs> me. So over here I'm casting Lina's Awakened skill also to try to increase Spina's output as soon as possible. It is recommended that you use Lina's Awakened skill when you have the chance so that you know you can actually have a very strong output much earlier because after the 6 minute mark Isabella will have a crazy crazy attack spike and that is really when you start to die and that should be around turn 30. Okay, so after you have set up and debuff everything, you will start spamming Spina skills. And when you see Chloe's Awakened skill come up, you have to use it. Because by this time, your poison immunity should have ran out. The poison immunity that Chloe provides is only about 6 turns if I'm not wrong. So, so casting this shield and also recasting 12 turns of poison immunity is very important for your team. So thereafter, you can proceed with continuing spamming Spina skills. Do note that because of the guild in buff, in this round you're not going to see Isabella do any defense blocking because I've reduced her block rate by 30%. So I assume that she does have a block rate of about 20% at least or even higher, 25 Try to prioritize Spina's awaken skill because this will actually increase her magic attack and also increase her damage output overall. So there are some things that I need you guys to keep in mind. First is Isabella's Awakened Gauge. You have to keep in mind that, okay? Otherwise, you are gonna die very early to her elimination. The second thing is, you will realize that I am not actually healing too much yet and letting the debuffs, whatever Isabella casts on me, to just go by because it's only two turns. So the moment she casts it, it's actually one turn gone. So you just have to use another skill and it'll be gone totally. So you don't have to bother with healing. Third thing is you need to look at Spina's crit buff above her head. So if you are using the old icons, you will see that Lina's buff should be blinking. I think it's much clearer to use the old icons because currently if you see above Spina's head, there is a crit buff and a crit damage buff and they look very very similar. So you have to take note. When either one is blinking, I would strongly suggest you recast Lina's buff, crit buff again. And the last thing you need to take note is Phoenix. Okay, Phoenix is very very important. It will increase your damage output by about 10 times I would say. Okay, so you have to recast Phoenix when you see that Isabella's debuff is already blinking.
and of course we'll talk about equipment later so don't worry about that so as you can see we are already at turn 18 at 4 minutes and I've already gotten about 6 million um, I would have to say that this is my best run after 2 hours of consecutive testing okay so don't expect yourself to be able to hit this score immediately it really took me super super long and even players who I know have been fighting with Isabella for the past many many seasons um, still have some difficulty with her she is really challenging right now and if you see over here I really pushed it to the limit Aragorn's awaken skill comes in only when you see Isabella's awaken skill start to light up and that is really the limit of course you have to cast it at that point otherwise you will die so beyond that is going back to Spina's skills you don't have to cast anything from Chloe at all after her awaken skill in fact if she dies it's okay and upon hitting turn 20 you have to take note of your hero's health okay so once they hit below 50% it is strongly recommended that you heal up Take note that Lina's healing is a turn-based healing, so across two turns, you will continuously heal back. And that is the key to surviving in this part of the match. And if you realize something, that my Aragorn doesn't counter that much because he is actually not on counter armor. He does have some counter jewels on him, but he is not on counter armor, okay? And another thing is... Before I go into equipment, I just want to say this here that you really, really, really need to have Willful Ring on all of your heroes. The Willful Ring is such a useful thing now over here because it actually helps to heal your hero completely once they drop below 50%. So I'm not sure when that happened, but it happened pretty early on. So if you saw that happen, then you will know how useful it is because it is sustaining me all the way to now. And if you are geared well, you won't actually proc the Willful Ring heal until mid-match. And I think over here, my Chloe isn't geared too well, okay? So that's something you can improve on. Over here, I'm trying to desperately heal at this point because the earlier you heal, okay, before Isabella casts her love tap 1 and love tap 2, the better your chances of survival and Spina won't be touched, okay, unless you're really that unlucky. And then you can actually continue to spam her skills a little bit more. So don't underestimate Isabella's damage. Because sometimes you may think that your hero still has 30%. 30% looks like a lot, but she can kill off your hero. This is the part where I thought well, I was pretty lucky that my hero survived. So as long as your frontline is surviving, chances are she may not target Spina. Okay? And that is probably how you will get through after turn 30 and onward to the 7 minute mark. So from here on, it is very very challenging because her damage is very high. You will not heal back as much. That's something you have to be wary about. Um, and if you do spend time healing, it may take away some of your damage output, which you may not want. So this is where you have to observe everything and see how things go. And of course along the way you may have seen that my Spina was being buffed by Lina once her icon, her buff is running out. So that is something you have to monitor as well. And of course, Isabella's Awakening Engage, I cannot emphasize enough. So all these things, there's so much going on when you're fighting Isabella that you have to really give it 100% attention. Okay? Because anytime you look off the screen and you miss one turn, one turn goes by very quickly right now. And if you don't kill a skill in time, let's say you are, you are too frantic and you change skills and you may actually lose that whole turn and that's not very good. So you really have to pay attention and right here everyone dies so we're left with Rachel. She's going to be eliminated by Isabella so we'll just wait for that to happen. Nothing Rachel can do okay honestly. So yeah, look at her glorious awakened skill, sucking all the life souls of your heroes. And this is it, 11.8. This is my highest score. For a good while, I have been stuck at 8 million, 9 million. 
So I'm gonna talk you guys through my equipment and I think I have to thank my guildmate DC Echina for really really helping me and giving me all the support he can give me uh, to make this run even happen okay um, so I'm going to start with Spina double lethal double HP PV attack crit damage and increase the weakening gauge and of course the willful ring as I said is very very important crit damage 14% so her limit break is very damage oriented nothing about crit rate increase or little rate increase so you might be thinking how then does she get 100% crit rate so crit rate only 70% at her base because she does have an exclusive item so 50% from Lina that is 67% and then you have another 30% from my crit buff that is 97% with the masteries you're gonna give her that is beyond 100% so she's definitely gonna crit no issue right there the only thing is whether Isabella will counter the crit with her block rate okay so her fighter soul this is as such I don't have the magic attack fighter soul so um, my damage output is definitely a little lower than maybe everyone's. I give her the damage taken received to be low from magic enemies. And this is my Lina crit rate, double HP, recovery skill increase, super important. Try to buff this as much as you can because every little bit of HP gain back counts. Okay, increase status effect resist rate. This is specifically for the bleed. Okay, I think the poison is still okay with the immunity given from Chloe. And then there's also skill cooldown so that I can actually heal up and buff my spinner accordingly. And also Willful Ring again and defensive fighter soul and more defensive limit breaks. As for Chloe, she does have the second highest speed so do take note of that. And she does have 2 HP, PvE defense, status resist for bleed okay skill cooldown not the pve one and i don't think you need the skill cooldown in fact okay and also defensive fighters so exclusive item is unlocked willful ring again very important it would be better if you can give her three awakened green jewels this will give her additional 3000 hp so that she can actually take the damage i would also recommend if you have the taunt accessory it could actually work over here so that Isabella will direct her attacks to Chloe so that you can charge up Chloe's Awakened skill much faster and you can get her Awakened gauge up easily. Aragorn double speed, higher speed over here, okay? And also HP. You don't have to give PvE weapons to him because Isabella won't take any damage from him anyway, okay? So what you want is definitely to buff his bulk. You can give him Storm Wing armor, that's even better. PvE defense increased by 50%, counter rate as I said. Um, if you don't want the counter rate, you can take it out because the thing about the counter here is that the more he counters, the more time lag there is gonna be. And during the time here he counters, Isabella's cooldown is reducing, okay? And you don't want her to be having a lot of skills ready. You want to be spamming Spina skills in between while she is still on cooldown. So that's why I think counter is not used because I honestly just followed my guild member and that is the reasoning I can come up with because from what I observe, counter is sometimes not very productive. Yeah. And here, Willful Ring and decreased damage from 4 to 5 target attacks. This is not very important because Isabella has 2 3 target attacks, so obviously this is not the case. Debuff resistances, receive less damage from magic heroes and defensive soul skills. And you really do need his exclusive item as well. And then for Rachel, double speed, she has the third highest speed, double HP and more bulk for her, also Willful Ring, same kind of traits as Aragorn. And of course you need her exclusive item for the lethal rate buff which is very important for Spina's damage output. So if you want to count the lethal rate for Spina, it's actually 40% here and she also has 50% on her passive so that's already 90% and then there's also 7% at base okay so that's 97% lethal so she's very close to maximum and then whenever Rachel's awakened passive comes up it's definitely gonna hit past 100 as well so 100% lethal 100% crit that is the best build for Spina over here and I'm going to talk about masteries these are my masteries increase PvE magic attack crit rate crit damage block rate and also magic attack of course and that's basically it for isabella i hope this video helped
currently I really don't know what's the highest score out there this is not even the highest score that my guildmate got my guildmate actually got a 15 million run so if you do have a better strategy let me know in the comments do subscribe and stay tuned for more guides thank you so much and see you